good evening everyone and it is indeed pleasure that uh, i i am taking on this lecture uh, dialogue with dr piyush desai who is my uh, co speaker and um, uh, to all the uh, psg team and the chairperson uh, as well as the whole uh, delegates around good evening to everyone uh, so the uh, dialogue uh, topic is pre conceptual counseling and management of pre gestational diabetes so now what is the definition around so the we we would take on this lecture simultaneously with dr piyush desai and uh, we would share the interactions on that line so gestational diabetes diabetes is not detected before pregnancy mm -hmm. but discovered during pregnancy and nearly all but not all cause some of the type 2 which we missed during uh, this diagnosis also so pre gestational diabetes is diabetes diagnosed before conception and includes women with type 1 and type 2 diabetes in that line why preconception care is mattering to us and that's the background for this whole dialogues uh, though so we have some of the data from us journals which ma mention this about uh, pre uh, preconception uh, gestational diabetes where the preconception care is not available where the chances of preterm birth defects and perinatal dates are much more higher and if we see the where the universal preconception care is available the preterm births avoided the birth detected defects prevented and perinatal deaths avoided are much more better appreciated than the routine uh, care which is not available for preconception uh, diabetes so now looking into prevent uh, table health and cost burden of adverse birth outcomes associated with pre gestational diabetes mellitus in the us and in looking into scenario the primary conception care is given to the pre gestational diabetes the direct medical cost reduction is by 770 million dollar reduced in lost uh, productivity is 3.6 billion dollar if if seen undiagnosed pre uh, gestational diabetes mellitus and in that the direct medical cost is 207 million dollar and 960 million dollar is lost in productivity so ultimately 5.5 billion dollar is a preventable cost which we encountered during this uh, pre conception gestational diabetes management now to manage this pre conception gestational diabetes counseling and the care i would uh, see one scenario is diabetes mellitus type 1 i will invite dr piyush desai to step uh, step up ahead and uh, go ahead for the same yeah so i will say here one thing is very important that uh, during adulthood type 1 diabetic uh, patients are not taking good care so this is the time to reinstate uh by screen uh, so this is the time where actually we can initiate a good care in type 1 diabetic person because that is i think pregnancy is the phase where you can instead best care and patient are highly motivated so if patient is not having good control we can enforce good control also for type 1 diabetic many a times hb1c is around 8.5 to 9 so i will say no unplanned pregnancies so whenever patient is coming to you in a regular period just start discussion with teenage girl that you should never have unplanned pregnancy barrier method iud whatever you want you can go for but this is something we have to talk to them we have to talk to their parents in early period even when they are not married but they are in early adolescent i am late adolescent to early young adulthood so that we can prevent birth defect which is ideally happening in first 3 month of pregnancy next along with that that is very important which i already told a good glycemic control now what is a good glycemic control for type 1 diabetic because in type 1 diabetic if we are not going to achieve 6 or 6.5 or 6.1 but if patient is on around 8 9 many a times i have seen patients are taking pre mix insulin instead of uh, basal bolus regimen so this is the time more smbg turning them to basal bolus therapy if patient is affording then even insulin pump is a good boon 
at the same time we have to counsel them for the complication screening especially retina and urine for microalbumin because retinal and kidney complication may worsen during the uh, pregnancy along with that nutritional management and awareness of that carbohydrate counting is something which we can add to their regime because many a times type 1 diabetic are not putting more emphasis on carbohydrate counting but pregnancy if patient is planning for pregnancy we can teach them because they have to balance their nutrition and as in my previous speaker told that pcod and emotional problem similar thing happens with emotional readiness is the need i mean emotional disturbances are very common in type 1 type 2 diabetic patient who gets pregnancy so they have to be ready and last but not the least folic acid and preferably with b12 and vitamin d and i will say even iron is something if at is if at all deficient please replenish it so this is what pre consultation counseling we can go for in type 1 diabetic patient and at the same time we can tell them if you control from day first or if you control even before day first then pregnancy outcomes are no different from general population macrosomia few later on things may happen but it will not be as bad as it should be with uncontrolled diabetes and we have enough data with type 1 and i feel we would have enough data with type 2 diabetes also and i would say i would like to invite dr yash again for how we can advise patient who are type 2 diabetic and now they are becoming uh, pregnant well wow. so uh, we know that in this present world what we see the type 2 diabetic individuals which are uh, much more presented in the early life even we have the delay in pregnancies also and the ivfs these are the trend where we see the type 2 diabetes getting into the pregnancies so in that line if we see the new recommendation by ed where the council all women of child bearing age about the importance of near normal glycemic prior to the conception which dr uh, desai also mentioned about and in that line it, it is not on the first day of conception but it is prior to that the mindset the lifestyle as well as adaptability of monitoring is much more important and from the major malformation directly proportion to hbl's level in the first 10 weeks of pregnancy had been represented in the scientific data also even at present also the strain in the time in range if how we manage that that is also important in first 10 weeks usually in indian scenario what we see is these uh, there are individuals who don't know even they are they are amenorrheic for more than 6 weeks to 7 weeks in their pregnancy and that's where the plan pregnancy uh, discussing uh, discussion of this uh, pregnancy planning among the uh, individuals who are child bearing in our consultation is much more important so discussion family planning and effective contraception until the woman is prepared and ready for Uh, the pregnancy is much more important as uh, previously mentioned by the speakers the pre pregnancy evaluation for the glycemic control the micro as well as macrovascular complications specifically focusing the serum creatinine urine albumin creatinine ratio uh, thyroid as well as comprehensive eye evaluation uh, is much more important in that line also preventing the pregnancy eclampsia and the further line the obesity is where we need to focus into this line. along with that medication review for possible teratogenesis including ace inhibitors and statins are the one we would look into in much more extent considering the modification of medical regimen in pregnancy is anticipated or if unintended pregnancy is likely to be there then intensifying the insulin regime or insulin pump is what more we would look into above that line even the statins thiazolidones ace inhibitors arbs even some uh, we know the sgld2 inhibitor are what where we would like to step down when before or starting the pregnancy and uh, metformin glibin, uh, gliburide may be continued if achieving adequate glycemic control and like same way mentioned the child bearing women if they are planning the pregnancy it is better to plan that thing with medical therapy prior to the conception looking into this line uh, what we have scenario is also to discuss for there are some individuals who place their pregnancy in the gaps 
and in that line they in previous pregnancy they were euglycin but diabetes mellitus type 2 is detected before second pregnancy so i would invite dr piyush desai to share his uh, inputs yeah, on this i would yeah definitely because see, what happens it is nothing different than what uh, dr yash told that uh, what type 2 diabetic patient should take care when they are getting pregnant but what happens that in first pregnancy patient was non pregnant and now in second pregnancy patient is already diabetic and then we see became pregnant so here one thing is very important it's a correlation so that patient will always correlate in my first pregnancy this thing has happened in my second pregnancy why you are doing this thing but we should tell them that uh, these are the condition which were more enhanced because of your diabetic status which was not previously in your previous status at the same time patient who are at risk on the other side like uh, first pregnancy euglycemia second pregnancy uh, diabetes instead of that if patient is already having gestational diabetes in previous condition then they should be screened early so i will say instead of picking up uh, uh, we can, this is the time we can pick up pre gestational diabetes so always screen them whenever they are going to plan if patient has previous history of gta pre diabetes many a times at camps patients are getting their hb1c around 5.7 5.8 6.1 they should be screened properly patient with family history patient with pcos patient with acanthosis and patient who are overweight should be uh, seen as a candidate who may have pre gestational diabetes underlying at the time of conception and they should be counseled before that to manage their weight manage their pcos and manage their oral pre diabetic status next and if patient is having gdm in previous pregnancy here again a correlation see gdm is a condition where usually a macrosomia or neonatal jaundice or some uh, minor minor birth defect can happen but if patient is type 2 diabetes if patient is pre gestational diabetes and now patient is becoming uh, pregnant then the scenario is different patient may be at even more higher risk herself as well as for her baby so here this is very important we cannot just correlate so we have to explain patient regarding the care care may be insulin needed need of insulin is going to be same but the requirement to insulin may be may be different overall uh, the high risk criteria for hypertension as well as antenatal screening especially for anomalies can everything will be more precisely done in patient who are now type 2 and having pre gestational diabetes next yes. That's and true. for that yeah. i think yes uh, you will also agree that uh, we will have uh, we should have national agenda for public health uh, action also to encourage to support state programs to develop prevention programs to expand community based health promotion to strengthen advocacy and to expand population based surveillance also because that is something we are lacking in our country many a times and i think dr sesa and uh, all senior members has done a great job to uh, do this thing Uh, as much as possible for india to create an awareness regarding uh, pregnancy and diabetes and this is very important to educate community leaders also to encourage healthcare providers to promote risk assessment especially gynecologists because they treat patient after patient becoming pregnant and something that we should take care before patient get pregnant and at the same time we have to encourage the access to train professional because they will fall into high risk category and from that from all understanding we should have our own public health research so that we can modify we can improvise our care to the patient with pre gestation diabetes yeah so that that is in the line thank you everyone 